All right, if you guys can just confirm that you can see my screen, you can hear me, we will move from there. Hi, Josh, it's actually Nate today. Mark might be lurking in the audience. Thank you, Bob. I am going to assume that you guys can see my screen. All right, today is Wednesday, January 23rd. We are going to go over a live site build, how to start from nothing and end up with a local lead generation site in Jensen. If you are on this webinar or you are watching this webinar as a replay and you don't have a Jensen account, you can go over to jensen.ai forward slash pricing and there is a completely free tier there where you can hop in, you can build one site, you can attach a site, you can get a feel for all the features we have in the platform. Now today, I had promised earlier, about two weeks ago, that I wouldn't do another long and meandering webinar. I might have to break that promise a little bit. I have a number of bullet points and things that I wanna get through in the builder. So today might go a little bit longer than the hour that I'm aiming for. Let's go ahead and just kind of dive in. So if everyone here has any ideas for a site that they would like to see me build, I would love for some suggestions on a niche Otherwise, I'm just going to pick one off the top of my head as I dive into the builder and we will just watch me build whatever it happens to be. Okay, we have some suggestions strolling through. We have fencing, we have roofing, plastic surgery. Do I have any more that people want to see? All right, let's go. We have a, a bunch coming through. Mortgage, flooring, house cleaning, landscaping. So the good news is that for all practical purposes, most of these sites and style of sites are going to share the same structure. Let's just go ahead and pick one of these at random. Okay, let's do a mm, let's do landscaping, landscaping and hardscaping, Mr. Christopher Yates. So we're gonna build out a landscaping site. The first thing we're going to do is hop over to our templates section. And let's go ahead and take a quick look at two of our special URLs before we dive in. So at any point in time when you're in the Jensen platform and you're building on a site, you have three options to view your site. The first option is going to be a template of, or a preview of the template. And that's going to be found right here on your builder templates page and it's going to be found hovering over the eye now this preview is going to show you the template version so before it's actually been processed by a site you're going to see a lot of raw, raw values you'll see tokens you'll see things that have been not pushed through the jensen site builder and if we actually hop into our site here, the second view, and this link might actually be down right now because of an SSL issue we're fixing, is going to be this temporary domain view right here. When you're looking at a site, you've built it out, you're going to have the template preview, and you're going to have the site preview. I'm gonna click this, it's probably gonna hit an SSL error. After we resolve that, you're going to be able to see the same template except for it's going to have all of the values for the site piped into it. So let me knock that off of my list of things I've talked about. Let's hop in and let's just build a site. I'm going to go through to my templates and let's go ahead and get started. So when we're building sites in Jensen, 90, I would say 99% of the time, 
we are going to go ahead and pick one of these pre-built templates that we've already had our designers go through, optimize, build out, and we would go and we would just replace images, replace text, go from there. Um, today, to make this a little bit more painful for everyone, I'm going to go ahead and start from scratch and we're going to build a somewhat simple site, but I do want to get into everything. So from this, we're going to build from scratch and that's going to hop us into the builder. And let's talk about the Jensen builder. So you notice on the left side here, we have the four main areas. Now the Jensen builder, if you've used it, you will be familiar with the fact that it works off of blocks. So these are pre-built HTML blocks that we've gone ahead and spent a lot of time developing. So let's go look for the navigation, which is gonna be under headers. And let's push an example block out there. So now we can see we have dropped one of our blocks there. It's a header block and We've also got this concept of components. Now components are a very raw form of using the builder. It's definitely not something that we spend a whole bunch of time doing, to be quite honest. We usually start with a, a template and build from there. But if you have situations where you want to drop custom things in, what you want to do is start with this empty block. And now we can see that we have an empty container here. And then we can go to our components tab and we can drop in things like a heading. We can drop in things. So here's a good example of the fact that sometimes things just don't work how they're supposed to. Um, Usually if we drop in an empty tab there, we should be able to drop in any component on top of it. Um, you know what, maybe we need a grid. And then we can try our heading. All right, so that was an example of the most basic form of using the builder. We have, again, you wanna drop in an empty block then you wanna drop in a grid, you can use all these different sizes, and then you drop in the base components. That will probably be the least used functionality as far as you ladies and gentlemen are concerned. But if you do need to drop down to this kind of basic editing of the page, you have that option there. You can drop in each of these components. They can also be dropped into existing builder blocks but let's go ahead and let's undo this builder block right here. And let's go ahead and drop down and let's make a quick homepage. So we're doing landscaping. I'm just gonna cross through the block section. We've already got our header. I'm going to put in a hero next, ideally with a call to action. Let's cruise through and see what we have. Uh, let's use this one, you know, maybe on the right side, not the left. So again, we have tons of options for all the different parts of the builder that we need to drop in. In this case, I'm gonna drop in, I'd like to use something with a form. Let's go ahead and use this one here. And now we've got other sections of the site we need to build out. So let's add some features. We can talk about the different services that we provide in the space. I'm gonna drop that there. Again, if you guys have not used the builder before, once you've dropped in a block, you can always rearrange it by simply hovering over the action part over here and grabbing this move icon and then just dragging below or above another block. What we're going to do is just continue on. So one thing I like to do when I'm building a site is take a look at 
some other sites that I can use and just make sure that I have everything on my home page as other landscaping sites. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna open a couple here. And we're going to take a quick look. So we've got some content, we've got some awards, pretty plain. We've got image gallery. Now, if I were to be building a site for an actual client and we have a great image gallery, I would definitely drop an image gallery on the home page. For a lead gen site, which is what I'm going to build out today, I might not drop an entire image gallery on the home page. We've got an about us. We've got a call to action here. I'm just taking a quick cruise and seeing if there's anything that stands out that we want to copy over. Not too impressed with those four sites there. Let's go ahead and keep on keeping on. So we have the nav bar, we have the hero, we have some features. Let's go ahead and let's add in some actual content so we can get some words on the home page and maybe give the site a chance to rank. So we'll put that in. It's a little bit of a quality guarantee. I'm gonna use this section to drop in a couple hundred words of content. Um, these are gonna be pretty short on the contents and there's not gonna be much content in here. It is important to get a little bit of words on the page. So we've got that there. Maybe the next thing I might want are some trust symbols, perhaps some reviews or some icons of the companies we've worked with. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some client testimonials. We're gonna change these, obviously, just getting the basics of a homepage down. So we'll move through and maybe one more area that's gonna let us have a call to action where we can give people an opportunity to contact us. And then let's go ahead and we're gonna drop a footer in there. And let's do this one right here. It's got some green in it. All right, so we have a home page, and the first thing that I'd like to do is talk about the Jensen templating engine. We are going to be editing our content and we can do things like this where let's say I have a header here and I can say this is my header and this will be rendered like this for every single site that uses this template. Now let's say that I want to use this template and I want to have it for maybe five different sites. So let's say instead of having a national landscaping site with service location pages for every major city in the country, Maybe I want to have a couple of regional sites. So I'm going to build this, this template out and I'm going to launch it as losangeleslandscaping.com and service the great and, and try to target the greater Los Angeles area. Maybe I'll launch another site that's targeting Miami and one more targeting the whole state of New York. So if I were to do that and to have them all use this template, what I would want to do is instead of just hard coding in the content, I would say something like home page header. And now we have inserted a template. So what's gonna happen is every single time that we turn this template into a site, we're gonna go through the Jensen site wizard and we're gonna have a step where the Jensen platform has gone through, parsed out this token, and then we have an opportunity to drop in unique content per website that we launch. So in this case, if I were to launch LosAngelesLandscapers.com. I go through the wizard. I would type in LosAngelesLandscapers.com for this token. Then if I launched the site in Miami, I would launch again. I would go through the wizard. And for this token, instead, I would put Miami Landscapers, whatever it is. That was a pretty basic example. But that is how the engine works. So we have a completely flexible system where you can turn any piece of content into a token. We also have these pre-built variables. So if you use any of these variables in this left side here, they are going to already have a value that they're gonna pull in. So 
the two main ones you're gonna probably use are the site email as well as the phone number. Now, if I were to do something a little bit different and instead of having a new headline per site, what if I did something like landscaping contractor in, and I just typed, let's call this one homepage city so I can know that I'm talking about the homepage when I type in. So now if I were to launch this template across two sites, instead of having to type in this entire section, I'm just gonna have the opportunity to fill in the homepage city variable. And then once I click save and deploy across as many sites as I want from this template, each one's gonna say landscaping contractor in whatever variable you put in here for that given site. So that is the templating system we're going to get to the actual part where i fill this in let me know if anybody has questions from here otherwise i'm just going to keep on trucking through so we've got this home page the main thing we want to do is probably make it look like it has some colors that go together the first thing we're going to do for that is going to be You know what, this block here isn't playing very nice. So if you ever have a situation where a block isn't allowing you to select it like this so you can edit the colors, just hit us up on support and we'll get that fixed fairly quick. It's a quick issue. Let me put another feature block here so that I can demonstrate putting some different colors down on the page here. Um, and let's just color this right here. So we're gonna drop this in here. Okay, so let's make this home page not look completely heinous. And we're going to try to find a color that fits together. Let me see how this light green works. This light green is not too bad. I'm gonna go with that. So one of the things that's a little bit annoying right now, it would be nice if we had a color palette where you could quickly apply colors across different elements on the page. Unfortunately, at this point in time, we do not currently have that. So you do have to come through. It's a little bit too light for my liking there. Let's bring it up a tone. You do have to come through and do it item by item. So if you wanted to change the color of these icons, you could do that as well. I'm just gonna make sure that this looks like an actual website and not like a randomly put together template. So one thing that I am doing, if you guys have noticed, sometimes when the selector is hard to pick out. So in this situation right here, we've got this main element that you can now see selected. We have the internal elements and we have this image elements. Because of the nature of the way that we're grabbing these elements, you can see that if I wanted to click this background here and I try to come over to the top left, I'm gonna get this image instead. To fix that frustrating situation, simply right click on any element you want and then click the style editor and that's gonna pull out where you're trying to go. So let us update a couple more things here. I'm gonna make this button have I want a different contrast there. So again, style editing, any element on the page, we click. We hopefully can click this little pencil. If not, we right click, we go to the style editor, and there we have it. I am going to hopefully grab these last two colors here. And maybe once I've done that, we will have a template that looks somewhat professional. So here's a situation, I actually cannot tell why I can't 
color that. And here's a demonstration while I'm here. So anytime you want to actually get into a block and see the HTML, make custom edits, you have the opportunity to do that for every single block. So the way that you do that is you hover over the action tool and you click this third icon in, that's gonna be the code. And that actually lets us peer in and take a look at what's going on. I'm imagining that what's causing that green border on the top is gonna be this line right here. And maybe if I delete it, it's now gone and we have a landing page that looks a lot better. So let's go ahead and let's start adding secondary pages. Now, when we actually go to build this out, I would actually fill this content in. Here's another quick tip if you have been using the text editor and have been having the situation where you select all the text, you press delete, and then you start typing and you lose the style. Um, the way to deal with that, it actually didn't happen in this context, but the way to deal with that is you select the second to last character, which would be right there, sorry, second to first, select the rest, and then delete it all. Um, we're gonna go ahead and chop up some of this content here. I actually wanted to change the content. So instead of why choose us, let's say landscaping services and let's say welcome. Maybe we'll have this say our our landscaping services and I'm going to go through here and let's take a quick look at what pages landscaping companies actually put out. So we have no extra pages here. We have a lawn care page here. So that's going to be one thing that we can put. So we can have a section for lawn care. We can have a page for hardscaping. And we can also have a page for a landscaping company, let's say Gazebo installs. I just made that up. I really don't know if that falls into the landscaping service area. Okay, so we would use this area. I'm not gonna do it all, but let's say, um, why choose us for landscaping? And I would go ahead and I would fill this out with a couple hundred words of content about landscaping, hitting some keywords, making sure that I wasn't being too keyword heavy on my density. What are our clients saying about us? Let's make this a little bit more landscapey. So our happy new or happy landscaping customers. Now, if you have an actual company you're building the site out for, you would obviously put in real reviews from that company. If you are building out a lead gen site, it becomes legally not even gray, it's actually illegal to put fake reviews here. Um, legally and, and morally questionable to be adding fake reviews. So hopefully you have some real reviews to put on the page. And it looks like we've got most of our content here. I would, the way that I create lead gen sites and pump out quick logos is usually using a website, freelogogenerator.com or tossing the work to one of our designers. So in this case, I'm not gonna go through the painstaking process of making a fake logo, but it is fairly easy to do with free software. You can download it, drop it in here. I'm going to leave some of this untouched down here so we can stroll through this. The next thing we wanna talk about is images. So let's select this image. 
And Jensen has an image library. Everything that comes through this image is free and open license. So you can use this on your websites. You can also just upload your own image by clicking here, dropping your own image in. We do recommend pre-optimizing your images. Um, it's something that I see a lot is sites with unoptimized images. You shouldn't have unoptimized images in your site in 2019. Everybody should be compressing their images down, making their sites load as quick as possible. So let's say I'm coming in here. I don't, I'm not even sure what the term landscaping is going to pull out. And these images, usually when we're doing a local lead generation site, I will lean on some of our own stock images that we've purchased. The ones that come through here are oftentimes a little bit more artistic than not. So I'm just going to go ahead and steal this picture here. And then we'll drop it in. Once the changes have been applied, it is supposed to automatically load in. You will see that sometimes, for whatever reason it happens to be, you do need to click the Apply Changes button again if there's lag between the image being processed and the system thinking that it's been injected into the page. So we've got that there. Let's change this hero image out. And I don't know if the word hardscaping is going to pull anything back here. It's not. Um, let's look at maybe backyard. And again, this is going to be a big picture. I'm not sure how this image is going to actually look rendered into here, but let's take a look. So the first time we did it, it looked like we didn't need to press apply changes. Now is a good example of needing to press apply changes. We've got the image in there. Boom. This is maybe the weirdest looking landscaping website ever created. Um, I feel like we ventured firmly into the pool cleaning zone right now, but we'll just continue with this. So we've got our home page. It looks like we have one more image I want to throw in here. Let's go ahead and let's figure out what to put here. I am going to maybe put in a blurred background of what looks like to be landscape in the background. Let's see if there's anything here. So we load images. You can scroll down, pull in more. We're going to continuously pull images in from the API. Mm, I'm not really impressed with how Im any of these images look. Um, what I usually do, I have some lifetime accounts that I've purchased, or I forget exactly the specifics, but I use um, deposit photos as well as big stock photos, and I'll pull in a bunch of my own images if I were to be doing this for a live campaign. Um, I will use this for some filler images, but let's just do... Uh, landscape and landscaping is not the same thing. Let me get one more just as a placeholder here so that our home page will look beautiful. None of these really look like they would go good for landscape, so I'm going to use this random sunny picture. And we will select that. It's a 50-50 on if it goes in, it's not going in. We press apply, now it's in. And we have our home page. Are there any other elements that you guys would like to see me drop onto this page before I move on and start adding some secondary pages? So we've got a question from George. How is the token variable passed to the page? Um, can you explain that question a tiny bit more, George? It's, it's not passed to the page. Unless you're talking about these pre-built variables, the only way to get a token on the page, so for instance, you can see in the nav bar, we have the phone number token and the site email token that already were there. Um, we we pre-populated those because we created this block, but the system knows 
that if this site has a phone number, that token's always going to be what gets replaced for the phone number or with the phone number and all sites come with an email that we build and all sites that get launched have access to the site email token, which is always tied to the email of the site. Now that is, I guess, one portion of the substitution variables where we have these pre-built in ones. So you can't use these and expect to have your own value bound to them. If you use any of these ones here, they're always going to have a value that they're assigned to that sh you should never have to touch if, if everything is working according to plan. Now, the other version of using tokens is what I've shown here. And let's just go ahead. I'm going to tokenize all of this so that we can just see when we go through the next step. So this might be um, lawn care homepage description. And let's tokenize this one too. Uh, lawn hardscaping homepage description. It's really bothering me that I spelled lawn care incorrectly over here, but it is what it is. Um, I accidentally just dropped a space in here. I don't want that. All right, make sure you have two variables or two opening and closing brackets. And then this one right here, let's say that this is going to be the variable for gazebo installs homepage description. Now I'm making these variables up and you can too. So what's gonna happen is we're going to go and click save and continue eventually when we're ready to turn this template into an actual site. And the moment that you click save and continue, in the background, Jensen goes through all of the pages that you've built. Right now, we just have the index page, but if you had 100 pages here, we're gonna go through, we'll process each of those pages one at a time, and we're going to detect when you've used the special syntax of having the substitution variable, and then we're going to allow you to input the actual value that you want in this template for the given site that you're deploying. So we'll see that live. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense um, George, so essentially the answer to your question is you put the tokens there yourself by editing the text. Okay, so we have a home page. Let's see, the next thing we have, let's add an about us page because we already have that in the header here and I'm not gonna have to struggle to get the link in. And the way to add pages is going to be by clicking the page tab and simply clicking the add page button. Now let me quickly walk you through what add folder means. Let's say that I have services and I have three services, perhaps they're hardscaping, lawn care, and gazebo installs. What I would do or what I could do is I could have this services page be an index listing, if you will, so a page that just lists all of the services that we provide and then each actual service could have its own service page, service landing page. And that those pages could each be in a folder called services so that when I went to the URL, I would go to mysite.com forward slash services forward slash lawncare.html. So that's how the folder structure works. In this case, I'm adding an about us. It's only going to be on the root. So I'm gonna call it about. And now we have this fresh canvas. So this is a good time to refresh everyone's memory or hopefully not show you the first time. But if it is, it's a great thing to use. We have the global block option. Now the global block option is going to force this block and whatever other block you assign to it to persist across your other pages. So what we want to do is re figure out why the global block is not working. Let me try to delete this page and see if the global block wants to be around before we add the new page. So let's try it again. And there we have it. So if you're in a situation like I just found myself in where you've already made a page, 
you have then made a second page and you realize that you don't have the global block set for the header and the footer, you can delete the page, set the global value on whatever page you want, and then recreate the page, and that's going to pull it in. So now we have this about us. And let's go back to our builder, and we're going to drop in some blocks. So an about us page is probably going to need a contact form. And let's find this contact form here. And I'm also going to want to drop in maybe this block here. And I might also, if I were building this, would put a block that shows my team. Maybe you can talk about some of your amazing landscapers you have. So here's a thank you page. This is a little bit of a weird layout. This is an about page, sorry. Um, we're gonna go through here. This is gonna kill that styling of the bold, but we're gonna say we are a landscaping company. And I might, make sure that this was templated across all sides. So I would say um, about us paragraph. And let's call it paragraph one. And let's put about us paragraph two. And we've got this here. All right, so we've got our about us page. We've got a form. We've got pictures of the people at the company. Let's put a actual service page next. So the first thing I want to do before doing that is make sure that we're actually linking to our About Us page. So we have an About Us link in the nav, and we just click the Style Editor, the Detail Editor, and we can see that we have the option to link to a block. We can link to a modal, which I'll go over, we can link to a CSS ID, or most importantly for this case, we can link to a page. And we press apply, and now when we launch the site, somebody clicks this about us, they're going to end up exactly where they expect to be. So let's make a service index page, and let's make some service pages. So the second thing I wanna do, let's add another page. I'm gonna start moving a little bit quicker. And we've got our global blocks. I'm imagining in our service page, I'm just going to have a bit of information about what we provide. Let me see what looks like a good service page. Okay, so if I were to be building out this site live, I'm going to be using a service page to most likely shuttle link juice to the actual pages that I want to rank. Um, I would have to do a little bit more research, but I'm assuming once we start getting into the nitty and the gritty of looking for the actual services that a landscaping company provides, like hardscaping, um, turf installation, all these different things, at the end of the day, we're gonna, be want, we're gonna wanna rank service pages or pages that have good keyword targeting, and we're not gonna be trying to rank a listing page. So in this case, let's call this one lawn care and turf. Okay, there's an example of when you select the text and you lose the styling. So I don't wanna select all, what I wanna do is select the second character, go to the end, and now we have the styling preserved lawn care turf installation and what do we want for this one to be go to webinar has its hide button exactly where i need to hide that so let's go ahead and we don't want to edit that text we want to edit this text we will select the second character go to the end grab the whole thing and we'll just call this hardscaping 
what I might do here. is put a little description and have it linked to our page. I might put more content on this page, so let's go ahead. And what I would definitely do is spend some time to make all the pages have the same color scheme and the same text styles. Uh, our landscaping services and let's say a subtitle here. We are very excited to provide you with all of the following professional landscaping services. So we have a services page. Um, there is a weird thing happening where this grid button is turning on. You can just turn that off if that happens to you. We will get someone to look into that. So we have our services page. Let's take a look. Okay. And I want again want to make sure that this is properly linked to where it should be. Let's link it to the services page. Boom. Theoretically, at this point, we have a three-page website. If we would have just started with an existing template, we would have immediately had a three-page website. But we now have, in what has taken me about 45 minutes going at a snail's pace. We have a, a three-page website, an about page, a home page, and a services page. Let's make a actual service page that we're going to try to rank. So the first thing I might do is add a folder called services. Let's call it service since we already have a page called services. We can't have a folder with the same name. Um, it's a little bit of a weird restriction. Maybe it's viable. Okay, so we have this here. And now I believe on the inside, let's add turf installation as our first services page. So we have a blank page. And what I'm gonna do here is create a template page if you will, I guess they're all technically template pages, but if you abstract the word template a little bit more, I'm literally gonna create one service page for turf installation, and then I'm gonna clone it multiple times to use as pages for the other services that I'd be building. So for this first services page, let's hop into the blocks and let's get out of the components. And what do we want at the top? So at the top of my services page, I'm thinking that we'll probably want to have some content out here. Maybe we won't include a CTA at the very top. Let's just drop this block right here. And We've got this beginnings of our services page. I might take a wild guess. Most likely, well, I was gonna say that there's probably not gonna be any artificial turf pictures, but I was wrong. Let's drop in a picture. It's one of those magical times where it applied itself. Uh, we would probably go through here and put in an H1 window installation. That is not at all what I meant to write. This is going to be turf installation near you. And I would go through, I'll edit all that. I will spare you the boringness of me doing that. One thing I do want to quickly talk about is the fact that header tags are important and the easiest way to see what header tag was used right there we can see that we're incorrectly using an h1 i would like that to be sorry we're incorrectly using an h2 i'd like that to be an h1 because that's where an h1 goes and now that is an h1 and that's how we control kind of the the nitty and the gritty 
of header tags. So let's add a couple more sections on our service page. Maybe I can find a service page of a local company to give me some inspiration. We'll look at their lawn care service page. And it's just got blocks of content. It looks very similar to a Jensen style site, actually. It's just HTML blocks here. So they've got a block of content that talks about the different types of lawn care. They've got tree care. It looks like they've got multiple keywords they're targeting here. I'm not a big fan of that. It would be nice if local service-based companies were better at SEO. For my examples, um, that doesn't have, all right, here's a services page. Let's try to find your actual services. Okay, so here we've got a decent amount of content. We've got images. We've got some testimonials. It's probably an important thing to add. So I'm gonna float back over to my site. I'm going to add maybe another content block in here because I wanna make sure we have enough words on the page to rank. So we've got that. And then let's do, a testimonial here. Maybe we'll do a different one than what we use on the home page. This looks kind of cool. So we've got this going here. I'm going to just let this color sit and not be the color that we used on the home page. Um, Jane Doe obviously have to be replaced by real customers review. And the last thing I want here, I need to have at least one form submit section that people can give their information in because there is always a contingent of your visitors on your website who just want to submit a form. They're maybe at work, they're maybe just antisocial, maybe there's a million reasons why someone doesn't want to talk to you on the phone, but they do want to submit a form. What we're going to do to handle that, I'm going to drop this back here. Uh, let's see if I can put in a different image. And it's going to be one of those fun situations where I have to right click, there we go. And I'm gonna get another turf picture here. Let's see. This picture right here, a really artistic turf photo is gonna go in. Let's go ahead and drop that in and Maybe it'll apply itself. It's not going to. So what we're going to do is apply it. Okay. And we've got this section ready to go. I would definitely, wow, this page is starting to look pretty heinous. Um, I would definitely spend some time cleaning up these icons, making sure that there was a, a unique, um, not a unique, but a, a cohesive view. And let's say, get a call back for a free quote now. So we've got this Jensen lead dialer block in here where if someone puts in their name, their phone number, we can go ahead and initiate a callback. I am not a huge fan of the color of that button. So let's try to update it. There we go. All right. So we have a service page. If anybody can think of any other sections we should drop on here, I think we'll be good with this. Maybe we can put in some more images, but for all practical purposes, we do have a service page. 
What I'm going to do now is just double check. And this is going to be exciting because I don't know if I've ever cloned a page. And we did successfully. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we had the turf installation page. Let's do uh, gazebo installation. So this is going to be our second service page. And this one is no longer about turf. As a matter of fact, this one is going to be about gazebo installation near you. Now, these are not the best titles ever. Um, this might be a case where you actually are not going to get any results back searching the word gazebo. Although, again, I am proven wrong. We have quite the prolific library of gazebos. So that's actually a really nice looking gazebo. Let's go ahead and select it. And click apply changes. And we have a landing page that is now no longer about turf installation. All of this text would be changed to gazebo installation. All of the images would be updated. Maybe the quote or the customer review is going to be about your great gazebo installation and not about your great turf installation. Let's just drop one more in here. This is a pretty picture of a gazebo as well. And let's see how much I can get. That is the ratio of the original picture section. And we're going to toss that in there. All right, so we have now taken the initial services landing page that we created, and we've cloned it, and we've made it a gazebo landing page. What I would usually do is I would build out um, pages for each of the services that we're providing in this specific area. We're going to get into using the site builder for multi-location sites. I am going to take a quick look over my notes. Let me just make sure that I've covered the basics that I wanted to cover so far. And then what we're going to do is go through the site wizard, see some of the deployment process, and then we'll hop back into the template after and we'll make the site a multi-location site. And I'll also go through and give us an example of using the modals. So we've gone over page cloning. We've gone over direct code editing, dropping directly into the HTML editor, clicking save. That is going to allow you to do things that you couldn't otherwise do in the builder. You can drop in your own JavaScript widgets. You can drop in uh, accordions. You can drop in all sorts of stuff if you have knowledge of HTML. Um, one thing to note. We've been using the clone page functionality this whole time. Once I've created this template, let's say I, I created it and I like it, it's 20 pages large. We've done a lot of work on optimizing it, on getting the images exactly how we want, the colors how we want. And then I want to make a, another site for perhaps a different industry. I can actually clone the template itself into a secondary template, go through that secondary template, and change out the content and the images. and save the fact that we put in a lot of hard work. Okay, so we've added pages. Let's go ahead and let's click Save and Continue. And now what this might do is choose to put us into a random campaign. But let's go with it. All right, so landscapers. Um, what city or geo do you think that we should target landscapers in? Um, Christopher, perhaps we will do a nice, beautiful area of the country with summer year round. Let's do San Diego landscapingpros.com. So we'll find out if that 
domain is available. Again, if you guys aren't familiar with the site wizard or how the, the process works with purchasing domains, if you choose this button here to buy a new domain, that is going to allow you to purchase a domain directly through our Namecheap account so that we have API access to configure the domain. We're, the system is going to generate an invoice for however much the domain is going to cost. It's going to charge your card. You are the technical owner of the domain. If there's ever a point in time where you want it in your own Namecheap account, you want it in a different registrar, simply hit us up and we will make sure that you get your domain. Otherwise, you can choose Use My Domain and this is going to allow you to bring your own domain. So let's say I owned the website kkmarketingpeople.com. I build the template in Jensen, I can add it in here, choose it, and then we're gonna get settings back. But for this example, I'm just gonna do a fresh domain. So since that didn't work, let's try sdlandscapingpros.com. And that's available. So we're gonna click purchase. That's gonna go ahead. This is gonna take maybe 10 seconds or so. It's gonna go through the API, purchase the domain, start to configure it in the background, and then we'll roll through the rest of these settings here. It is a nice, long purchasing process. Luckily, we're going to be able to buy it before someone else does. All right, the domain's purchased. So in the background, Jensen is now going through, it's setting settings, it's doing things in the DNS world. Hopefully by the time we get to 12, we'll see a live site. Otherwise we'll have to wait a bit and I will demo some of the other builder functionality on a site I've already made. So since we came out of already building a site or building a template, we're going to already have that selected in the template section. We are going to be able to choose whether or not we want to just have DNS as or Namecheap as the direct DNS, or if we want to use Cloudflare to put some security between us to hide the IP of the site, whatever it is. I'm just going to use Namecheap. So this is the email that's going to be automatically picked up by the system in the site email token. So again, it's going to be this. I'm just going to type this in here, but this site email token. When this is in the template, this email that you see right here that you have the option to put the first part and it's gonna be at your domain, this is what gets pushed in there. When you use the phone number tab, so this is the phone number tab, if I were to have used this token in the builder, then I select any of these numbers, I can select my Twilio numbers, which are gonna be found and controlled in the call center or I can connect my call fire number, my call rail number. You can assign one number as the main number for a site, and then you can have the option to assign a different number per page of the site. When you have a main number for the site, that is always gonna be accessed under this phone number variable, regardless of its Twilio, call rail, or call fire. They're all accessed the same way. And I'm gonna skip adding a phone, oh, let's add a phone number. Hopefully it's not already assigned somewhere else. You can also buy a new phone number in here. And then you can choose how the phone number displays or is formatted on the site. Um, if anyone has any issues with this, please reach out to me or reach out to someone on the team. I know we had a, uh, a ticket last week about this format not properly coming through. Um, but theoretically, if you have this selected, whenever your phone number gets pushed onto the site, it's gonna look like that. If you have this selected, it's gonna look like that. And then if you have the international, it's gonna look like that. Let's move on through. Okay, so one of the main parts of the any landing page or any website is going to be how you collect leads. Leads are gonna come in through primarily through three ways. One is by phone calls, two is by emails, and three is by, by form submits, not necessarily in that order. The platform has gone and it has parsed every single form on any of the pages that we created, and you have the option to configure those forms here. So if I were to configure this form, 
You can have the message shows that pops up in the modal once the form is submitted. You can choose emails or phone numbers to get notified when this form gets submitted. You can also uncheck this and it won't show the email and the text message isn't gonna show what domain it's coming from. So if you have clients or people that you're sending leads to and you don't want them to know the source, you can attach a billing plan. A billing plan has a price for form leads and it has a client. So if I wanted to sell form leads from one of these pages, I can create a billing plan, make the form leads $10 a pop, add a client, attach the client to that billing plan, and now every single form lead that comes through this form will be billed to that client. We also have the opportunity for Jensen to send a quick email to anybody who submits your forms. And last but certainly not least is the ability to connect all of your forms to an autoresponder such as MailChimp. Again, that's gonna happen on a per form level. So this is gonna be our homepage. This is going to be our um, this is going to be our about us page and this is going to be from our services page. Now this might be a bug because we do have two services pages and we've only parsed one. I will have the team look into that. Um, maybe no, it definitely should be two forms. So that is just a quick little bug. There should be a form parsed for each of those location pages. In this case, it looks like only one of them got picked up. And we can just roll right through. And now we are looking at the variables section. So if we remember, we had the home page, we had the home page city that we had dropped in there, we had the about us paragraph one section, paragraph two, company name looks like it was prob probably inserted by us. You just need to fill it in. So let's do um, SD landscapers. Um, get your beautiful gazebo installed. Hardscaping services for you. And we could go through and we could fill all these out. And for this one site being deployed on this one template, we're gonna have all of these values put into those variables or to those positions. If I were to use this template again and launch another site, maybe miamilandscapers.com, we're gonna go ahead and we'll have the same page again, except for all of these tokens will be empty and we can fill them all again for our second sites. Um, we have these social variables. These are predefined usually in your footer or your header. You put in your social URLs, we'll drop them in. Let's continue on. So anytime you have a form on the page, you can optionally have it protected by Google reCAPTCHA. This is reCAPTCHA version 2.0, not 3.0. Um, we should probably put that on the page here. But if you're ever getting spammed, you can simply go sign up for a free reCAPTCHA account, put in your domain, get your site key and your secret, put it here, and then your site's gonna be protected. We're gonna go without it in this case. So this is arguably the most important tab. Um, this is where you set your, not only your Google Analytics to verify your sites, you can also connect directly to Google Analytics via API. Most importantly, you control your meta title, your description, and less importantly, your keywords. But if we click the advanced tab, we're going to be able to see every single page we have and be able to do that. So let's say turf installation professionals in San Diego, California, and get your turf installation job started this week, contact us today. So I would probably put a little bit more thought into all of this if I wasn't doing a quick demo. And if I was launching the site for real, again, we can add custom scripts so this is javascript that you only want to be in the turf installation service page and that same concept applies all the way down until this section here this is going to be global scripts or global markup that puts gets put in your header um, so let's move on from there and this billing plan 
This is going to be how you actually charge people for leads. Let's quickly take a look at adding a webhook endpoint. So this is fairly technical feature and how you can use this is let's say every time you get a new lead on this website and you want to push it into Zapier, what you could do is go into Zapier, set up a webhook uh, integration, have an incoming URL, and then you put that URL right here. You click endpoint and you might want to unclick these. And then every time a lead's created for this site, we're going to shoot off a JSON post request to whatever URL you have here. That helps you get your data out of Jensen and into other platforms. And you do have to delete it if you're not going to fill it out. All right, so we have gone and we have pushed this site out. Let's see. And it looks like, unfortunately, the world of DNS is not quite going to let us have a live site yet. Um, there's sometimes an instance where you can just buy a site and push it to us and it'll be deployed live. Honestly, it's usually most of the time. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll give this a little bit of time to resolve and hopefully we pick it up there. Again, we can now see the temporary site. So it looks like we are able to get into the temporary site. We can see now the email has been pushed into the top, the phone number, the call tracking number. We can go to the about page and now we can see that we are a landscaping company. Here's our about page form, meet our team. And I actually not sure we did link services. Um, I haven't links from here, but we can do that. Let's go ahead and see if we can find one of our deep pages. So it's going to be called service and lawn, no, what was it? Turf installation.html. And now we have one of our service landing pages. And everything is live. I'm hoping that in the next few minutes we can get this to catch so that we can look at our site live. And there we go. So we are looking at www.stlandscapingpros.com. In about an hour and 13 minutes, we have created a initial template. We have call tracking built in. We have lead tracking built in. We have email automatically configured. The thing is deployed on our servers. It is all flat HTML with JavaScript, so it loads quickly. The one thing we might want to do is download these images, uh, optimize them, optimize them for size, compress them a bit, and upload them. Let's make sure that we can go to the HTTPS version, and we have SSL automatically configured as well. Sometimes that takes a minute in the background. Um, we left out putting in this, this token here. Um, we added from the variable section, hardscaping services for you, as well as get your beautiful gazebo installed. So that is kind of the high level process of working through the builder and getting a very simple template out. Now we are going to do a couple of things here. The other two things on my list is one, I would like to demonstrate how to use the locations tab, which is essentially making this website a multi location website. So you could have service pages on a per city level doing things like maybe we're, we're if we're in San Diego, unfortunately, I don't know the smaller suburbs of San Diego as well as I do of Los Angeles or Orange County. Um, if we would have built out, let's say this was LA landscapingpros.com and maybe we want to have a page specifically targeting Hollywood. We want to have a page specifically targeting um, Santa Monica. We want to have a page targeting North Hollywood. We can do that with how I'm about to show you right now. So step one of enabling your locations for your website is going to be hopping 
back into the builder, going into the templates, and adding two pages. So the first page that we need is going to be the location index page, and that's going to be a listing, or it'll have a page with a link, or a block with a link to every single location that you provide services in. That is not a complete necessity. You could take a block of every location and put it in any page, and then you just need the show page. But for this example, I'll go ahead and do both. So we have these two pages under the drop down of the add page button. It's the add locations index page and add the location show page. Again, the index page means that it's a listing of every single location that is attached to the site, and the location show page is going to be the actual service or city page. So step one, let's add the index page. We can see it right here, service location index. What I want to do is go into our blocks and quickly talk about our service location page block section. So we have these four right here, which are going to be used on an index page. And essentially, it's just going to list out all the locations that are added for the site. And then we have the actual location block here, which I'll use on the next page. And this is to embed a map of the location that we're looking at. I'm gonna add a little bit of fake content into this header. Let me see, anything at all. So I might, I probably wouldn't be trying to rank this page. Actually, I definitely wouldn't be trying to rank this page because it's just gonna be a listing of all of the different cities in this location. Let's change this weird Latin and say, we service all of San Diego. And then I might put in more content here about the fact that I service different cities. Um, maybe I'll say whether you're on the coast in Pacific Beach or inland near a city that I can't think of inside, or let's say downtown, we've got you covered. And I would also update this content. Okay, so this is the location index page. Again, we're gonna be listing out all the locations we have for this site. Part two is going to be the location show page. And you can think of this pretty much the same way that I use this turf installation page as a template, except for I actually had to go and click clone, and then I changed out different attributes. The way that this works is it's one template page, and through the use of variable tokens, you can substitute in information that happens to be attached to the current city that you're looking at. So let's say for this pay, the site I had Pacific Beach and I had La Jolla as two cities that I wanted to target for SD Landscapers Pro. When I am looking at the actual page that'll be automatically generated for La Jolla, I will have access to city.name, which is gonna spit out La Jolla, city.state will spit out California, and then city.phone number is going to work if we have a custom number bound to the city page. So we will show how to do that. We've also got these ones here. And what we want to do is start to make a little bit of a template page for this city situation. So I'm gonna make another section where I have some content. I honestly, I kind of liked that block that I just used on the index page. Um, I'm gonna want a little piece of content up top to talk about the city. Uh, these are more feature blocks. I just want a nice clean 
piece of content. Mm, let's try to add this in here. All right, so I might add a generic landscaping image here. Let me just grab another one. Mm. These are a little bit art, too artistic for my liking. Um, this is nice and patriotic. We'll use the American flag. So we're going to put that there. And click apply. We didn't need to. OK. Let's talk about putting in these variables here. So I'm just going to cut and paste. And let's say that the main headline is going to be landscaping services in, uh, that's weird. So let's not cut and paste that in. I don't know if that's gonna affect anything, but it looks like it might be pulling a value. Um, let's put city.name in there. And we've got some of these other values, we can use the county, we can use the lat long, we can embed different pieces of information. Um, there is, I don't wanna say there's absolutely nothing wrong with using duplicate content across service location pages, but if you have a relatively small number of service location pages and you get in a decent of enough content to signify that they're unique pages, you're not going to be hitting the same duplicate content filter that you'll hit, let's say, if you have a content authority site. Um, the duplicate content filter works much differently in local markets. So I might go and I might make a sentence here about we provide landscaping services in city.county. That's actually gonna probably use the same county for both these pages. Um, try to get into that text. Okay, so I've added a sentence there. I might add a couple of more sentences. Um, I'd probably go, I would change this, I'd add this as well. Uh, I don't know if I want that button to be there, so let's delete it. And this is starting to look like a very American and patriotic landing page. Let's hop back over to our blocks and let's go to our service pages blocks. And then let's drop in this map listing right here. And what that's going to do is embed a little Google map of this exact location. And then every page that we have needs some conversion elements. So let's maybe drop in a testimonial from our super happy landscaping clients. I'm gonna just make one of those really plain ones here, it looks like. Keep with our plain theme. And then I also wanna make sure that you always have a form to submit. And I don't know if I want it to be the callback form, I'd wanna bigger form, but it's going to have to be a smaller form. Uh, you know, maybe we'll just stick with the callback theme and see if we can't generate some calls instead of form submits. This callback, technically, it mitigates or reduces or completely abolishes the whole point of putting a form on this page and the form that I wanted to be there is so that the person can avoid human contact. This form forces human contact. Um, I would probably go through it and make a different form. Let's go ahead and make this less ugly and look more like our site. Okay, so we have our templated city landing page. Now what I'm gonna do is click save and continue. And we've added the two pages that we need. So we have the location index page and we have the location show page. Part two is now adding the locations that we want. So we natively support the UK, Canada, 
and the United States, as well as Australia. If you have, if you want to build out a local Legion site um, in a different geo, just ask us. Um, these are just the ones that we've integrated because these are where our users are from for the most part, or where they're building lead gen sites. If you have someone else you need, just reach out. You have the live chat here that you can pretty much always get a hold of somebody. We're going to go through and we're going to put in San Diego County. And then what's going to happen is we're going to have all of the cities within the county that we selected populate. And I'm just going to go through, I'm going to pick out. So usually the way that I like to do local lead gen sites is I'm not going to spam out like um, a page for every single zip code, every single city. Um, I'll usually try to pick out by population the top X percent, the top 50% by population, or maybe even the top 25% by population, and really only build out pages that have enough search volume. Um, there are plugins like SERP Shaker or whatever else the newest uh, mass site builder is that will always work to generate every zip code. You could always click this button, but for the most part, what I like to do is tailor things down a little bit differently. So unfortunately, my Mac made me press back. Let me hop back into San Diego. And let's go ahead, and I'm just going to add maybe five pages. So the first page can be Carlsbad. Chula Vista is a big one. Um, you've got Corona Del Mar. Coronado, this was filled with lots of wealthy people. I'd probably want to build out a page targeting them. Um, and then where is La Jolla? This is another really wealthy part. Also Ocean Beach and probably Pack Beach as well. And so I'm going to click Add Check Cities. What that is going to do is it's going to take all the boxes that we had checked here, and it's going to populate this table down here. And we have a final opportunity to edit specifics for each page. So these are the cities that I've selected. We're pulling out the lat, the long. This is going to be used for generating the Google map for each page. Um, you can spit it out into the page if you want, if you need to use it for um, jQuery plugins or anything at all, you have access to it. You have the actual location, so if you want to maybe update exactly how the county is spelled or how the county looks, you can do that here. You can also set the zip code that you want attached to the city. Um, lots of cities have multiple zip codes in the U.S. I don't know how it works in other places, but we definitely have that. And then probably most importantly here is the ability to bind phone numbers on a per page basis. So let's say I had five different landscaping contractors in San Diego who are buying leads from me. Conveniently, they're from Carlsbad, Chula Vista, Coronado, La Jolla, Ocean Beach, and Pack Beach. I would be able to have each of those pages with its own unique phone number. And once we have a unique phone number, we can then have those calls directed to a specific client and we can segment everything like that. We can sell leads off of one site to multiple different people. Um, I do not think we get to change this. And let's say we wanna control what is before the path. So this is where you do that. Um, the service location index, service page path, that's going to be pointing to, let's hop back into our builder. It's going to be pointing to this page right here. It is a little bit confusingly named, but we will go ahead and leave it right now. So I'm gonna have locations, and what we're gonna do is click update Jensen site. Now what has happened is our site that we built that had no location services theoretically should have service pages for those five cities. 
So the way to check that out, you can either link directly to this page. I'm going to see if I can go to it, to the service location index.html. And voila, we have our service location index page. We could have put a link up here that says locations. It could link to this page and we can see now that we have five pages that have been generated. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six pages. So we have one for Carlsbad, we have one for Chula Vista, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go ahead and click in. And now we can see, if we click into the Pack Beach page, we have this landscaping services in Pacific Beach. We have the Google map that has the center pinned right in the center of Pacific Beach. And we have our widgets, our customer testimonials, as well as our callback widget. If we click back, and let's just hop into La Jolla, we can now see that we have a separate URL for La Jolla. I see that it looks like we're purposely making an underscore here instead of a hyphen. I'll get that changed, I don't really like that. Um, but we can see now where we used the city.name token that we have the actual name of the city being piped in here. We can see that we are targeting La Jolla on the map instead of Pack Beach. And that has basically been, if we would, so if we would have had a phone number and we would have used the phone number dot or the city dot phone number variable, we can pipe in the actual phone number specific to this page. If we just use the main phone number variable, again, we're gonna reference the global phone number for the site. But that is essentially how you build out city pages. We spend a lot more time making sure that we have content in here. We use spinning to get little unique blurbs of text. Um, I try not to slam hundreds or thousands of city pages. We do like to kind of start them off a little bit slower. Let's say I started the site today. Maybe next week I'll push out like five to 10 city service pages. Maybe not even next week. I'd probably want to build some links, gain some authority to my site, make sure that Google likes my site, that they're going to be coming around indexing new pages. And then I will kind of release waves of city pages so that the indexing happens properly and we don't just try to drop 500 low quality pages and expect Google to index them on day one. So the next part, um, let me know if anyone has any questions thus far. We are now, I believe, at the hour and a half mark. I'm gonna try to get through the rest of this in about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is using the builder and having pages that aren't necessarily connected to your main flow or more accurately, connecting modals and forms to thank you pages. So let's say for instance, that I wanted this form to fill out and when they click send message, it goes to a thank you page and it gives people some more information. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna come here. I'm going to click add page. Let's call it the thank you page. And let's quickly go to our blocks and our content. Mm, I just want to drop in a really simple piece of content. That was probably the wrong place to go. Mm, where's going to be the best area? You know what? Let's drop in. Let's try to get fancy here. I am going to just drop in an empty block. With a hundred percent with container. And what I want to do. Theoretically, 
Let's see. Hey, thanks for submitting that form. And let me just delete this one. I didn't need to. And I might drop an image in here. I would like to drop an image of my smiling face. Unfortunately, I don't have an image of my smiling face ready. So let's just drop something else. And let's see what comes up when we search the term happiness. That looks pretty happy there. And we're going to jack that guy's face, apply the changes, and I don't really like, I don't like this thing. Let's see if we can move it. Oh, that's going to be a link. We don't need to link off of this anymore. All right, so we have our thank you page. So. This is a fairly simple thank you page. What I'm gonna do in real life is I will add a conversion tag here. I will make sure that anytime anybody hits this page, whether it's from Facebook ad, whatever it is, we'll be monitoring conversions from the thank you page. Let's go back and let's look at our home page now. The way to wire up that homepage form to this thank you page is actually not what I'm thinking of. We're going to click save and continue once we have the thank you page. We're going to get into our settings and what we want to do is we want to modify that form. So we added a new form. We see that it got parsed. This is going to be the header form and what we want to do is force that, that form to submit it's not going to do what we want it to do that's unfortunate um, let's hop back in the builder and let's take another look what I would like to have done was have that form submit and then drop to our thank you page. Let me see if I can do that with this. Okay, so I didn't actually need to leave the form. All I needed to do was click on the actual form element and let's choose a redirect link. Let's choose the thank you page as the redirect link. And let's click apply changes. Um, really quick while I am in here, Let's say that you wanted to add some extra form inputs. Number one, if you know a little bit of HTML, you can just edit the HTML direct, add your own form inputs. If you don't know HTML at all, you're in luck because we have this really confusing widget here where you add the inputs by choosing the key, the label, as well as the placeholder. Once you've done that, you'll have a new form input in there. We are going to beef that up so that you can choose the different types of inputs and have much more control over it. Um, right now, it's a little bit rudimentary, but it does work. So now we've taken this form. This black color is just bothering me. And we have connected the form to our thank you page. So let's test that out. So we've clicked save and continue. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the site and we're going to say test.com test and say 555, 555, 555, and let's say this is a test message. Uh, we've got my Grammarly doing crazy things to the input here. And once we click thank you, we click OK. So in the real world, that is supposed to, wow, it's a crazy bug. Um, that is supposed to drop us on our thank you page. Unfortunately, 
it didn't. Hopefully by the time you follow those instructions, it will. Let me try to show us how to get to the thank you page when it works properly. So that is an unfortunate bug. Um, let's have Grammarly stop freaking out. Uh, ideally, when you click send message, we, sh we configured it so we drop on the thank you page. It's not, it will be fixed. Um, let's look at a secondary way to do that. So let's say that instead of having this page here, I'm gonna add a block and all I really want is a button. And let's see, any block with a button will suffice. I'm going to make this one here. And let's get this. So let's get a modal and let's call this a intro modal. And what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to drop in this form here. And now we have this little modal that's going to pop up. Now, this is the second way to kind of push a form to a landing page. What we're going to have is a link. We're going to have a link pop up a modal. We're going to have the modal submit drop us on the thank you page, almost like a simple local funnel. So I have my modal created. I have a button ready on the home page, I believe. So let's select the button. And what we want to do is have it pop up our intro modal. Click apply changes. And now, theoretically, we can get this modal to drop us on a thank you page. Um, see if it's going to let us do this nicely. All right, so let's just test and make sure that that link is going to pop up the modal. So again, we've saved and continued. Quick note, every time you save and continue, the system automatically builds and deploys your code um, to, to, to make sure that that actually is happening. You can always come into this publishing tab click publish now and that'll force the latest updates out. But when you click save and continue, it happens automatically. When you click the update Jensen site button, it happens automatically. And when you edit your settings here and click next or save, the deploy happens automatically. So let's reload. We now have our secondary block that I added in here. We have our modal. This modal doesn't know about our thank you page yet, so I'm a little bit upset because I'm not gonna be able to show piping things to a thank you page. Um, if there's any of the engineers watching this still, if you guys wanna hop in and let me know if there's anything I'm missing doing this, but we do test and we do test. And unfortunately, this demonstration failed magnificently. Um, I will make sure that both of these things get handled, but the goal of what I wanted to show was we can pop up a modal with a button and then we can have the modal or we can have any form drop you straight into a thank you page. I'm going to have to update this training, um, hopefully by the end of this week, possibly next week with working examples of that going. Um, we are constantly pushing code into this big bad boy, and that is an unfortunate side effect that my modal demonstration doesn't work. All right, so let's hop back over to the site. And what we have now is a three page, three main pages, as well as the service location pages. What I would like to do is put a nav bar link so that people can actually find those pages. So let's see 
how to do this. Now, this is a little bit of a risky activity. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clone one of these elements in my nav bar. I'm gonna go ahead, come here. It's gonna be called locations instead of services, and it's gonna go to the service location index page. I'm gonna click apply, and I'm gonna save and continue. And then I'm just going to reload my website. And now we can see, boom, we have this updated tab. And now our site links together nicely. It goes all the way through. It looks like our header, our global header situation didn't follow through there. Um, ideally, that would pull through, so we would still have that link. Um, this locations link should follow all the way through. I will get that resolved as well. Um, but now we have updating this. We could choose this to pop up a contact modal, whatever you like. Um, I would probably put my actual service pages or at least one or two of my most important service pages here. Um, but this is the process of building a Jensen site. Are there any questions? We have hit the hour 46 mark. I am going to try to wrap this up because it is a pretty long webinar to be running through. Um, any last minute questions for this demo? Um, it looks like, oh, I guess it did follow through. It, it was a Chrome caching issue there um, on that global header. But that is pretty much the walkthrough. And we've got this question from George. Is the free Jensen tier a free trial? If so, how long does it last? Um, no, George, it is a free account for life. The way that the free tier works is that you get, so let me hop into the system really quick. If you're a free user, you get access to build as many templates as you want, but you can only deploy one of them to a site. You can add, uh, so you get one site, you get one phone number in the system, you get no clients, so the free tier comes with no billing. Um, you do get the lead management. So I guess now that I say that, you don't get the lead management because you don't get a client, but you do at least get the lead interface where you can see the leads coming through. Um, you essentially get access to the entire platform, every feature forever. Um, ideally, we, we obviously would like you to upgrade and not be on the free feature or the free tier forever. But if you do, for whatever reason, just want one simple lead generation site to be built out, um, you can do that with us. We'll host it free forever. Um, it's probably not gonna stick around for much longer than I would say maybe the next six months or so. Um, we're trying to get as many users into Jensen as possible testing out the platform using the system we want to have a pretty low barrier to entry and then eventually we are going to raise that barrier back up um, no problem eric it was my pleasure doing the walkthrough that is pretty much it for today that is a site build i did keep it a bit high level um, i do i would like to start a monthly series where i actually build out a real site and not just have it be as theoretical as it was today, but literally the exact process of how I build a real site, getting all the images done, getting the, the pages optimized, ordering content to drop in, all of the interlinking, the site structure, the analysis. Um, I think that's gonna be a weekly series that I either publish in the Jensen forum under a free section for everyone, or I might move it over to um, Traffic Runners, which is uh, my brand that I'll be producing more content under. Um, we'll see. But that is pretty much it for today. I want to thank everyone for sticking around. And I will get the replay out, hopefully published by tonight, maybe tomorrow. Hope everyone has a good week. If you are a lead generation forum customer of ours, remember tomorrow, Thursday, is our weekly webinar with Mark. And I will let you guys go. Have a great week.